solving rational equations. In this lesson we're going to solve rational equations. Do these six equations look like they would be difficult to solve? We will solve them during this lesson. To get the most of this lesson, try to stop the video, work ahead, and then restart it to check your work, or if you get terribly stuck. Why are these equations called rational equations? It's because of this root word of rational ratio, which means fraction. While we could solve all of these equations by graphing, and easily with a graphing calculator, we will use algebraic methods to do so in this lesson. This is the first problem we'll solve. 4 over x equals 10 over 8. Even using algebraic methods, there are many ways to solve this one. The first thing we'll do is what we try to do in all these rational equations, that is to get the unknown out of the denominator. In this case, by multiplying both sides of the equation by x. We employ the distributive property and multiply x by all terms inside the parentheses. The x over x cancel each other in the first term. So what we have is 4 equals 10x over 8. Then we can cross multiply the 8, which is really multiplying both sides of the equation by 8. That gives us 32 equals 10x. Next we divide both sides of the equation by 10. 10 over 10 cancel on the right side. And that gives us our answer, x equals 3.2, and that can be written as the mixed number 3 and 1 fifth. Now our next problem, x plus 8 equals 20 over x. Just as we did in our last problem, we will rationalize it or get the unknowns out of the denominator by multiplying the equation by x. We apply the distributive property and multiply x by each term inside the parentheses and this becomes x squared plus 8x equals 20. This is now a quadratic equation. We could go from here to solve by completing the square, but we'll try to solve by factoring by first subtracting 20 from both sides of the equation. 20 minus 20 cancel on the right side of the equation, so we're left with x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0. From this form we could also solve by graphing or by using the quadratic formula. So here at the upper right we place the parentheses to get two binomial factors and the factors of quantity x plus 10 and x minus 2 are the ones that work. To find the solutions we break the factors into two pieces or equations. We have x plus 10 equals 0 and the other piece is x minus 2 equals 0. And solving for x, x equals negative 10 and also x equals 2. And so those are our answers. It's important to check the answers and when substituting negative 10 and 2, both the answers work. Now the next rational equation. 2 minus 3 over x equals 13 over x. To rationalize or get the x out of the denominator, we multiply both sides of the equation by x, applying the distributive property to all terms. And that becomes 2x minus 3 equals 13. We solve for x by first adding 3 to both sides of the equation. Negative 3 plus 3 cancel on the left side of the equation. What we have left is 2x equals 16. Next we divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2 over 2 cancel on the left side of the equation. Our solution is x equals 8 and substituting back 8 for x in the original equation both sides of the equation are equal so that's our correct answer. Now we'll look at this rational equation, 6 over x squared minus 5 over x equals 1. This one has another level of complication. This time an x squared is in the denominator of one of the fractions. We're going to rationalize this equation by multiplying the equation this time by x squared instead of x. Again we use the distributive property of algebra and multiply the x squared by every term inside the parentheses. That leaves us with 6 minus 5x equals x squared, a quadratic equation again. We'll solve by getting one side equal to 0. We first add 5x to both sides of the equation. Negative 5x plus 5x cancel on the left side of the equation. We bring down 6 equals x squared plus 5x. Next we subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. 6 minus 6 cancel on the left side. We're left with 0 equals x squared plus 5x minus 6. We bring the equation to the upper right to continue working it out below. 
we set up a factored form to attempt to solve by factoring. We have x and x, the first terms. The factors that work are quantity x plus 6 times quantity x minus 1. We separate these two binomial factors into two separate equations or pieces, x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. Solving the two equations, we have x equals negative 6 and x equals 1. And I've tested the solutions and they are both correct solutions. Now we have this more advanced problem. 2 over quantity x plus 2 plus 2 over quantity x minus 4 equals 1. The challenge here is going to be coming up with a common denominator when we have these two different denominators x plus 2 and x minus 4. Again, this is rationalizing the denominator. What we're going to do is clear out both denominators by multiplying the entire equation by quantity x plus 2 and quantity x minus 4. We need to apply, again, the distributive property and multiply all terms inside parentheses by quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 4. And this is what it becomes. It seems like a lot, but let's simplify as much as we can. On the left side, quantity x plus 2 in the numerator cancel the x plus 2 in the denominator. For the other term on the left side, quantity x minus 4 in the numerator is canceled by the x minus 4 in the denominator. We need to then use the distributive property with the two terms on the left side as well as the two binomials multiplied together on the right side of the equation. We're left with 2x minus 8 plus 2x plus 4 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. That already looks a lot simpler, doesn't it? Combining like terms on the left side, we have 4x minus 4. To save room, since I'm running out, I'll subtract 4x and add 4 at the, time, at the same time to both sides of the equation. The terms on the left side of the equation cancel each other out. We have 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 4. I tried to solve by factoring, but couldn't find factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 6. Since the x term is an even number, negative 6, that means that we can pretty easily solve by completing the square. To move out the minus 4 on the right side, we add 4 to both sides of the equation. Negative 4 plus 4 cancel on the right side. We bring the result, 4 equals x squared minus 6x up to the right. To complete the square on the right side, we take this number, the coefficient of the linear term, or coefficient of x, which is negative 6, and negative 6 divided by 2 equals negative 3, shown at the upper right. And negative 3 squared is 9, positive 9. So we have to add 9 to both sides of the equation to complete the square on the right side. So we have 13 equals quantity x minus 3 squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we have x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 13. And that becomes x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. And that's going to be our answer. On a number line, that would be one root of or solution between negative 1 and 0, and the second solution between 6 and 7. Not a real easy problem to solve, but I hope you can see that with algebraic methods, you can solve rational equations, even with this level of complexity. We will do one more thing with this problem before moving on, and that will be to check our answer, or at least the reasonableness of our answer, by graphing on the calculator. Solving for zero, we enter the equation to be graphed here in y1, and here's the function graphed. And we see two solutions along the x-axis between negative one and zero, and it's a little hard to make out the other one in this view on the right side, but it's between six and seven, as calculated earlier by completing the square. By changing the window, we get a better look at the solutions, which are easier to see. Now we'll look at our last problem. 1 over x plus 3 plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 6 over x squared minus 9. Our common denominator is going to be the product of these two denominators, quantity x plus 3 and quantity x minus 3. So this is what it looks like to begin with. That common denominator multiplying the equation, the quantity x plus 3 and quantity x minus 3 on the outside of the parentheses. But this denominator on the right, x squared minus 9, can also be factored using the difference of squares. And here it is with that denominator on the right side factored. And in the denominator on the right side, we have x squared minus 9 becomes quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 3. 
Now we're going to distribute the quantity x plus 3, quantity x minus 3, to all terms of the equation. Here it is, all expanded out. For the first term on the left side, the quantity x plus 3 in the numerator cancel the x plus 3 in the denominator. On the second term, we have the quantity x minus 3 in the numerator canceling the x minus 3 in the denominator. And for the right side of the equation, we have everything canceling out besides the 6. We bring down what's left, x minus 3 plus x plus 3 on the left side of the equation and 6 on the right side. The 3, the minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel each other out on the left side. We're left with 2x equals 6. In dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we have x equals 3. So is x equal to 3? Is that our answer? Not so fast. If we substitute 3 back into the original equation, it will make both this second term on the left side and the right side of the equation undefined. And that means that to this original equation, there is no solution. We can take a look at the equation using a solving by a graphing calculator method. And here is the equation solved for 0 entered into y1. And here is the graph of that equation. It approaches the x-axis but doesn't touch the x-axis. It's even more apparent with the window of the view screen changed. The x-axis is what we call a horizontal asymptote. The values uh, will approach 0 but never equal 0. This has been Solving Rational Equations. Thanks for viewing.